Hey, and welcome back. In this section, we'll provide a high-level overview of Weaviate's data structure. That means we'll take you through concepts like indexes, the schema, classes, and properties. First, let's talk about indexes. Indexes exist to help you find the right data faster. They are pre-built and maintained from your data to do this. What this means is that when a query comes in, the system doesn't need to look through every data object, which can take a long time. Instead, it can simply look through the appropriate index to find the right data objects. In Weaviate, there are two main types of indexes, the inverted index and the vector index. You might be familiar with the inverted index. It's structured like a reference table that allows you to quickly look up a term and find objects containing that term. The vector index, on the other hand, is all about enabling efficient retrieval of vectors based on similarity. And just like how the inverted index speeds up lookups for matching terms, the vector index speeds up vector similarity searches. Weaviate builds a vector index of your data in the background using an approximate nearest neighbor algorithm so that it can perform vector searches at lightning fast speeds. Together, these indexes enable vector or BM25 searches as well as a combination called hybrid searches. They also work together to allow vector searches with filtering. You saw examples of this with where filters in query examples. You saw how they were able to only search with objects matching a particular condition. So that was indexes, which is all about enabling you to find the right objects and fast. Now let's discuss classes, which is all about how you structure your data objects in Weaviate. In Weaviate, collections of the same object types are called classes. It's really important to note that each class constitutes one vector space meaning that each object in the same class is converted to the vector in the same way. Going back to our color analogy, a collection of RGB colors would constitute one vector space, as each of them would be represented by the same system of three numbers representing red, green, or blue. Now, if you had another set of CMYK colors, that would be a distinct vector space from your RGB colors, as not only there are four numbers, but also each number means something different to the RGB numbers. So when you're designing your data schema in Weaviate, it's important to group objects that you want to search together in the same class, since vector searches can only be performed within a single vector space. Finally, let's touch on schemas. A schema in Weaviate is the blueprint that defines all the things we've talked about and more. That's its data structure, classes, properties, vectorizers, module configurations, index configurations, and more. You should know that thankfully, you don't have to define every aspect of the schema manually. Weaviate has an auto schema feature to best infer any missing information as required. In the next section though, we'll show you some of the most important parts of the schema that you must define, and then we'll build up your knowledge from there. To recap, this section is all about the key components of Weaviate's data structure, including indexes, classes, and schemas. Remember that indexes allow for fast data retrieval, classes group objects of the same type as one vector space, and schemas define Weaviate's data structure. By understanding these key concepts, you'll be well equipped to make the most of Weaviate's powerful vector database capabilities. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.